Why was I programmed to feel pain? I feel alive! He's very excitable, so don't say anything to surprise him. Pleased to meet you. Actually, we've met once before. What?! A Happy Madison produced pilot based on a four minute sketch from Adam Sandler? I don't know about you, but I hate it already. This is The Pilot is Dead. Hello, welcome to The Pilot is Dead. My name's Matt Dressel, and every other week, we take a look at a show that didn't quite make it past that crucial first episode. This week, we're traveling back to 2006 to check out the Comedy Central pilot, Gay Robot, where I'm guessing the pitch was, Woo! Gay Robot! The pilot centers on a robot that was turned gay when somebody accidentally spilled a wine cooler on him. <laughs> okay, very funny. What's it really about? While Professor was building the robot, he accidentally spilled a wine cooler on him. And he came out gay. Really? Okay, I'm gonna just... I don't really know what is the appropriate amount of money. Let's just say $20. Focusing mainly on my rectum. Mainly on my rectum. Mainly on my rectum. Mainly on my rectum. Or all the money. We'll just go with all the money. Now, believe it or not, I actually do research for this show. So when I put the words gay robot into Google, I was introduced to a whole world of forbidden desires. Everything from music. Gay robot. Gay robot. To art. To literature. And now I'd like to take a moment to read an excerpt from one of the many hundreds of books I found online. Oh, you know what that sound means. It means it's time for our contractually obligated ad to our sponsor, Codex Art and Apparel. Actually, let's kill two birds with one stone. Here's a Codex Art and Apparel t-shirt reading an excerpt from Mated to a Military Drone. <clears throat> Warrant Officer Jonas Smith looked at his colonel in confusion. Wait, you want me to do what with a drone? It was simple. Human pilots controlling early model non-autonomous drones had suffered breakdowns due to long-term stress. That is why the next generation of autonomous drones were designed with throbbing robot cocks. Codex Art and Apparel. I can't believe they're still my sponsor. This episode was also brought to you by Crippling Depression, because sometimes you're depressed, but have to write an episode about gay robots anyway. The character of Gay Robot was introduced on Adam Sandler's comedy album, Shh, Don't Tell. I believe we have a clip. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I don't think Gay Robot. The pilot was penned by Nick Swardson and Tom Giannis. Giannis also directed the pilot and was originally a writer on The Man Show, because obviously. When asked why he felt the need to write about a gay robot, Tom Giannis said, <laughs> You said gay. Swordson starred in the pilot and also voiced the titular character. And if you giggled at the word titular, you're most likely a fan of Nick Swardson. You most likely know Nick Swardson from his stand-up comedy. It's like the same with the word gay, like I always say that things are gay, people get mad at that. Don't say that. <laughs> Stop. Don't say that. <laughs> gay robot. But it's like gay, it's just a word. It has nothing to do with gay people, but some stuff's fucking gay, dude. Or his breakout role as Terry on Reno 911. Terry, when you are here, you are an ambassador for Reno. Heavy on the at the door. The bitch. But maybe I'm being too hard on Gay Robot. I mean, this character clearly means a lot to Nick Swartzen. First he tried to make it into a pilot, then he put the character into his sketch comedy show, then he tried to make it into an animated series, and most recently he's been trying to develop it into a movie. And I mean, when this thing hit the internet in 2006 on MySpace, it took the internet by storm. So maybe I should listen to Kyle here, who's definitely not in jail right now for sexual assault. So let's take a look at Gay Robot. <laughs> Why does the theme song sound like it was written on Soundtrack Pro? Well, that's probably because a great deal of the budget went to creating and operating the robot. It cost $250,000 to make the robot and three people to operate it. And what Hollywood superstar was inside the robot? If you guess David Ide Pierce's body double, Doug Jones, you're absolutely right. That's right, Doug Jones, who at the time was filming his iconic roles in Pan's Labyrinth, was also making this. That's like discovering the cure for cancer while also drowning a puppy. So let's start off by meeting our main characters. There's this guy, this guy, 
and this guy. They play sports, they watch sports, and they talk about sports. Woo! Gay Robot! So Gay Robot shows up and we're introduced to the main source of comedy in this show. And if you have any questions about any teams, Gay Robot also knows the line on every game. Yo, you guys, I can drive a bunch of people to the formal invite this Saturday, so you guys can get hammered. What wheels are you driving? The Alumni Association gave me a Hummer. Oh, that's fat. Yeah. I wanted to give you a Hummer. And there's your formula. Make sure to say Gay Robot a lot, talk with a lisp, and say sexually explicit things. Wash, rinse, repeat. So Gay Robot. <laughs> it's not just funny because I say Gay Robot. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's certainly an interesting idea, Gay Robot, but, um, I don't think you need pubic hair. And for those of you who didn't notice, yes, that's Councilman Jam from Parks and Rec. If I were a writer on Gay Robot, I would probably make a stupid pun about the word jam. Like, I want to jam my fist into Nick Swartzen's stupid f Okay, sorry. This show just sometimes takes a toll on me. I'm sure there won't be any more puns. What about the time you asked Boris from the wrestling team if he wanted to wrestle his balls into your mouth? Next. So the robotic gay stereotype wants a date for homecoming. And could it be he wants a date with a man? <laughs> yup. But gosh darn it, gay robot can't stop hitting on men who are straight. So he gets depressed. And what do all gay people do when they get depressed? They go peeps and bulges. <laughs> So Gay Robot's friends, guy, other guy, other other guy, girl, and other girl, come up with a plan. And yes, it's just as stupid as you think. Huh? So, where's my date? What do you mean? He's right here. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's so bad for Gay Robot. I have a bet for Steve, too. Does he need a ride home? So the robot decides to try online dating, and it's just another excuse for more of this. Hey, internet dating? Yeah, I'm just checking out dudes and filling out my profile. What should I put? Well, how do you want to describe yourself? I'm a robot, and I like wieners. Okay, so that was stupid. And balls. And semen smoothies. Are you done? Fart tacos. Um, I don't even know what that is. Well, this guy liked it. So the robot finds a date, but it turns out the guy's a total weirdo. You ready to check out the glory hole? Yeah! Let's head down to the party room, dude. I just got new carpets, so make sure your wheels are clean. Uh, yeah, they're clean, I guess. I'm gonna find the G-spot on the G-bot, you know what I'm saying? And that's Gay Robot. Believe it or not, I actually don't have the last 10 minutes of this episode. Even though it was widely released on BitTorrent and MySpace in 2006, any trace of the full episode has disappeared online. So we're really left to just guess what happens with the end of the show. Which is exactly what we're gonna do! So Gay Robot gets viciously attacked, but survives and becomes super pissed, and so he gears up to get revenge while I Need a Hero plays. And so he tracks down the bad guy, captures him, and puts him in jail. And in the end, he's given a new look and made a full U.S. citizen. You know, I've only been doing this show for a little bit now, but I can unequivocally say that this is the worst show I've ever seen. How this became an internet sensation in 2006 is completely beyond me, but I guess the internet was just a different place back then. Dear perfect stranger, I am Mono, a feral cat, born in a Brooklyn alley. I invite perfect strangers like you to join me in this per -per perfect song. See you next time. Sometimes the world looks perfect, nothing to rearrange. Sometimes you just get a feeling like you need some kind of change.